You know what I need to cover? Alpine Linux. I've installed Alpine probably more than any other Linux distribution. I rarely ever use the damn thing. Alpine's a really interesting, like if you want like a really simple, basic one that for like, you know, you're putting it on a potato. <laughs> Alpine Linux is kind of what I use for that. Small, simple, secure. Dude, now you're speaking my language. Uh, Alpine's great. So if you have like a netbook or something like that, you just, you can't find anything better than Alpine. I think it's like a hundred megs. Let's just download it and just see. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something I toss when I need just like a base Linux. It has 64 bit. It has arm. It has power PC. You know, you got your tr traditional, uh, right here. Let's just grab the traditional 64 bit standard. Yeah. 189 megs and you'll have yourself a Linux uh linux base distro like let's just install it real fast i uh, this is how crazy alpine linux is uh, i i don't ever use it i don't even think i made a video on it but you really just can't find anything better if you just need linux on a system and you need to do it quick you'd, you'd, mm, you'd be hard pressed to find something better uh oh you know what i need to toss that one second uh titus what kind of weird oh, i gotta fix my my naving here but do we have images let's paste that in here alpine standard let's just install it and just see how long it takes us all right alpine where are you at alpine uh i see i gotta change my collation to show that but anyways Let's do that. None detected. What's Alpine based on? Uh, is it Debian based? I can't remember. Slackware on an honorable mention. I think OpenSUSE is based on Slackware, if I'm not mistaken. But Slackware is one of like uh, the OGs. I think one of the the original distributions, one of the very first distributions ever to be made for Linux, and the I want to say the oldest. Right? Is there any older distribution in existence? Alpine's independent. Okay. Well, let's just go generic Linux and see how it goes. I would normally increase my memory and CPU. Well, let's just give it four. I mean, we're really gonna, not going to need 25 gigs. Sure. Let's customize this. Um, let's just call this Alpine. Um, we'll do BIOS. I don't really care. Topology. Let's fix this. I don't know why it always says that wrong. All right, that should be good. So originally Alpine was Gen 2 based. Interesting. All right, let's let's begin it. Um, local. So it uses OpenRC to start up instead of Systemd. God bless you. See how fast that booted? Like, what? That's just insane. Uh, so as far as the setup on Alpine, let's just. I apparently have forgotten how to install the damn thing. <laughs> oh, so funny. Uh, set up Alpine is the command. All right. Set up dash Alpine. Man, I, I don't know. I, I, I might be jumping off of the system D bandwagon because that was just kind of ridiculous, was it not? Like, let's just give it a reboot. So we've reached the reboot. Okay. Let's uh toss this boot option up here. We'll boot it. All right. We'll just uh, force off. Power it on. All right, so we're booting it back up. Yeah, toss you over there. Um, cannot read from CD. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? This is hilarious. All right, let's grab Alpine Standard. All right, we're booting it up. Here comes the boot from the CD. <laughs> you gotta love that. Yeah, System D, man. Hmm. You know, everyone always jokes about Linux from scratch, but look at Alpine. That boot time, you just there's just no denying it. My goodness. That really, really makes my brain go, I like it. Yeah, that's true. The boat time's kind of crazy. I, I actually looked at doing... Well, I actually did it on a live stream that one time where we tried to flash the firmware. Oh, that was funny. Overwrite like Intel ME and, and flash our, our firmware chip on the board of a laptop I had 
to do Libre boot. That was, that was fun. Yeah. Now I, I, that's, that's so cool. I like it. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, let's just guess set up Alpine. All right. Keyboard layout us. A little available variants. I know I'm good. Oh, us. Oh, what would this be? Oh, us American. Where are you at? <laughs> uh probably us intl oh just us yeah there we go uh system host name small as hell <laughs> that's what i'm gonna do uh let's go e0 dhcp do you want to do any manual configuration no new password uh, what time zone you in let's go list I want to say just America, America, Central. Oops. Uh, how do you drill down into that directory? Is it America, U.S. Central or something? Oh, it's probably like Central Standard Time. Oh, damn it. Or America, Chicago, maybe? Chicago. Okay, that worked. <laughs> yeah, it ended up being Chicago, best for Central. Um, proxy, none. All right. Select a mirror from above. I mean, okay. Um, yeah, we'll just select one. Set up user. Yeah, let's make a user Titus. Titus. Okay. Enter SSH key or URL for Titus. None. Which SSH? Open SSH. Available disks. Which disk would you like to use? VDA, how would you like to use it? Um, let's see. Traditional sys disk install, no encryption. File systems will be boot, root, and swap. Yeah, sys is fine. Erase the disks, yes. It's been a little bit since I did Alpine. Installation is complete. Please reboot. Let's power off. Alpine Linux, ladies and gentlemen. In all of its glory, let's go boot options. We're going to take off that CD-ROM. All right. So here we go. Start time. Here comes the boot. Bam. It's like a two-second boot. Oh, wait, wait. We're discovering the IP. Titus. Wow. Oh, I love Alpine. I just love that minimal feel. Like I remember installing Alpine. There's also minimal versions of Arch, too on oh geez i think it was some terrible seagate network drive that like masqueraded as having like its own thing and i remember hooking up a console cable to it and wiping it out and putting like alpine or uh minimal arch on it and ah uh, i don't know there's just something i love about that minimal system that you get with alpine it's just beautiful it's just so darn beautiful. Yeah, Clear Linux, I heard, guys, actually is getting dis discontinued. So the old Intel counterpart of Clear Linux, they threw their hat in the ring, and they're like, ah, uh, never mind. We're out. And, you know, I liked Clear Linux for its ideas. It really took System D to the next level and really utilized everything System D had to offer. They were using, instead of FS tab, like most distributions, it was using the auto mount feature built into system D. It was using like the system D timers instead of cron tab. It was using all these things the system D offers, but you know, other distributions just didn't use. So I, I kind of, I kind of dug it anyways, Alpine Linux. Um, what is the package manager in Alpine? Can't remember. I know it's not uh, APT, right? Um, what do we have oh man been a minute apk that's right yeah so here's your apk tools ah so cool oh it didn't even have a pseudo command so you gotta switch to root uh uh distinct packages uh 5000 all right man that's a fast update on apk we can do an apk search pseudo Oh, they're using Duas. Uh, Duas pseudo shim. 
Uh, oh, actually, I think uh, uh, do as. Let's just see. Interesting. Anywho, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Ah, uh, I'm done. I just wanted to show Alpine. I love it. It's such a cool distribution that doesn't usually get much love. Oh, okay. Yeah, APK upgrade would actually update in this, this system. So neat. Oh, Duaz is already installed by default. Okay, so I just need to do Duaz instead of sudo. I probably create an alias because I'm so used to doing <laughs> sudo. Yeah, it's such a cool distro. It does not give very much. I probably need to go through and do a video over Alpine Linux because Alpine is so cool. You, you could install it on literally anything. And it's just so minimal. Luke, I'm, I'm using Rocky right now. Yeah, and Alpine's used massively in corporate data centers. Yeah, I've seen it a lot out in the wild in, in data centers, mainly just because it's such a minimal footprint. <laughs> Sudo is bloat. Just run everything as root. Yes, 100%. You could install it on a toaster for sure, Don. Like, no joke. Like, if that, that toaster has enough compute power to throw some digits up on a screen and a little bit of storage, you can do it. Like I said, I installed it on like a Seagate network drive. It's it's kind of insane, like how how little it takes. Yeah, and the beauty of having such a small, minimal thing. I know a lot of people are always like, "Why are you always trying to do something minimal or doing the this way?" The less crap you have on a system, the smaller attack surface you have. So if you only have a couple things, well, there's only a couple things people can attack you on. It, same principle applies to like my website, christitis.com. It's a static site. You want to hack me? Good luck. There's no attack surface. You can't hack an HTML file. You can't hack something that doesn't have a database. It's just, that's the beauty of minimalism, especially on these things. So um, that, that's the gist of it. So cool.